Hello, what is up and welcome to Fixture City and today it's back. Well, we know it's now back. The Premier League is back. Football is back and the 2021-22 season is now underway. And today I am going to react to Match of the Day's Premier League fixtures from game week one. So... This is going to be very interesting and um, I am going to see how all 20 teams have done this weekend. So, let's get on with it. Uh, I'm just going to check my brightness. Here we go. New intro. New intro. Arsenal, United, Southampton. West Ham, Villa, Burnley, Leicester, Everton, Chelsea. Come on, the Blues. Uh, that's Newcastle and Leeds. Wolves, Norwich, Watford. Liverpool, Brentford, Crystal Palace. Brighton, Tottenham. And then Man City. Oh, new logo as well. Look at this. There's Thomas Frank, Troy Deeney. What a song. Sweet Caroline. And Sancho at United now. There's my boy Mount. Look at that game. 5-2 Leicester against Man City last season at the Etihad. That was class. But just look at this. And what a song. Sweet Caroline. Ba, ba, ba. Oh, it's shown England as well. Da, da, da. Ba, ba, ba. I swear they just showed Arsenal's some of Arsenal's clips from the season before last season. Shouldn't really be there. It's Righty Boy and Shearer with Lineker. Old Trafford, Man United leads. Roses Derby. Look at the atmosphere at Old Trafford. And look at the away supporters from Leeds as well. Right, who was playing? De Gea, Wambasaka, Lindelof, Maguire, Shaw, McTominay, Fred, James, Fernandez, Pogba, and Greenwood. And of course, Varane's signed, doesn't he? Melier, Ailing, Strauch, Cooper, Dallas, Cock, Rafinha, Rodrigo, Click, Harrison, Bamford. Hang on, just while they're taking a knee, I'd like to pause it a second. I swear Bielsa looks a bit like the. Very, very irritating and despicable owner of Real Madrid, Florentino Perez. He does look a bit similar, doesn't he? But Bielsa's an absolute legend. He's a brilliant manager. Anyway. Oh, Fred lost it then. But United have won it back. Here's Greenwood. Pogba. Oh, I thought that went in for a second then, but that was great from Pogba. Solskjaer and Michael Carrick are loving it. Look at that step over. But it was wide. His click. Harrison on the left. 
Back to Click. Oh, Click's getting away from Fernandez and De Gea's punched it away. Leeds have started as well as Man U have started it. There he is. There is, there is Jaden Sancho. No, I meant Leeds have started well like United have. Is Fred. Is Fernandez. I oh, tried to cross it to Greenwood. Tried to cross it to Greenwood, but it was it was too powerful, and Greenwood couldn't get to it. Greenwood couldn't deliver then. Oh, that's a shame from Melier. He's giving it away to Lindelof now. McTominay. Look at the what a pass from Pogba. Fernandez, a deflection of Melier. Oh, he scored. Fernandez has scored. That was quite jammy, I'm not going to lie. But I'll tell you what, though. Pogba's assist was incredible. That was sublime from Pogba. 1 0 Manchester United. And it, yeah, it came from a Leeds kick out. Not good for Melier. And Bamford missed it. Bamford missed it. But what? Look at that pass from Pogba. That's sublime. It's a shame because Melier actually got to it. It did get to him, but it deflected in. But it's still a goal from Bruno Fernandes. He has started bright. Here's Luke Shaw. Fernandes back to Shaw. Daniel James wide on the right. But he gave it a go. See, that's what I prefer from football. When people give it a go, rather than take doing too many tricks and you waste it. That's what Hazard used to do for us. So, Rodrigo's come off for new signing Junior Firpo for Leeds. What a shot! What a shot from Ailing. Bang! That went in. He didn't even score last season. Touch as soon as he passed it. Top left. That's some goal. That was a great goal. De Gea could not get to it. Rafinha. Oh, he's giving it to the United defence. Luke Shaw's got it again. Pogba. Finding Greenwood. And he, Strout can't keep up with him. Oh, that was brilliant. Dribbling, precision and in bottom right. Greenwood is the fifth highest scoring teenager in Premier League history. Greenwood completely overran Pascal Strout there. And it's 2-1 Manchester United. And this is what I predicted. 2-1 Manchester United. Melier. Oh, he's giving it away. Bamford. That's twice Bamford's given it away now. And another pass from Pogba. Here's Fernandez. Did that go over? They're saying it has. Fernandez has been on fire, as has Pogba this game. Pogba has assisted it again, but apparently that crossed the line. 3 1. Yeah, that is definitely over the line. That is definitely over the line. Luke Ayling could not clear out in time. Yeah, clear goal. 3 1, Man U. Don't they just love it? Oh, what a pass from Lindelof. Oh, what a goal to get your hat trick. First pass from a pass from Lindelof straight to Fernandez. Bang. And that's his first hat trick for Man U. 4-1. Leeds blown away. That is some pass from Lindelof.
How is that offside? I thought that was class. That was some goal. Four one Manchester United. Popper. Rafinha can't get to him. And that's in to Fred. Fred of all people has scored. And that's another... That's a hat-trick of assists for Pogba. He has been phenomenal, this game, Pogba has. He has been absolutely phenomenal. He's provided a hat-trick for Fernandes. He's predicted... No, Pogba has provided... A hat trick for Fernandez, a goal for Fred and and Greenwood. Well, two goals for Pogba, sorry, because of course Lindelof, Lindelof assisted one of them. But no, Pogba's been class, and he now him and Daniel James come off for Jaden Sancho, their new signing from Borussia Dortmund. Uh, Matic and Martial also come on, but Tomine comes off. Helda Costa and Tyler Roberts come on for Harrison and Bamford. I think Bamford's been terrible today with those two mistakes. That was Rafinha who nearly got another one in then for Leeds. But it's a heavy defeat for Leeds United. The Red Devils five, the Whites one. So hang on, I'm gonna pause that because I'd like I didn't hear part of Solskjaer then. But yeah, final score: Manchester United five, Leeds one. A hat trick from Bruno Fernandez. Mason Greenwood gets one. Fred gets one, and then Luke Ayling gets one for Leeds. Let's hear what Solskjaer and Bielsa have to say. Hang on, what was the attendance? Well, first of all, first off, I agree with Solskjaer. It's great to have the fans back. I'm sure everyone will agree with me on that. Seventy-two thousand forty-nine to fifty-one. Sixteen attempts to ten. Eight on target to three on target. Five corners to four corners. One point four two expected goals to zero point thirty goals. Expected goals. Bookings for Luke Shaw, Liam Cooper, and Rafinha. Now, who's the who's the signings? Um, who are the signings so far for each team? Sancho, seventy three million. Varane, thirty four million. I have seen that he's confirmed now. Tom Heaton for free. Romero's gone. Twanzebi's gone to Villa on loan. Yeah, and in for Leeds is Firpo and Harrison. Alioski's gone, as is Pablo Hernandez. Right, let's hear what the managers have to say now. Because I am yapping. Oh no, look at that. That assist is sublime. Absolutely class. Brilliant display for Manchester United. But no, no. So basically, Alan Shearer said, um, watch out for Fred and McTominay because they were brilliant as well. I mean, I agree. They did play their parts, but they did show at the start then Fred's mistake. But of course, as we all know, everyone makes mistakes in football. But anyway, um, I would still say the best player on the pitch was Pogba. I mean, I thought they're, they're all. I know Fernandez is getting the highlights, um, the main um, highlights, and. Um, all the talk and all the hype with the game because he got the hat trick. But for me, the best player today was Pogba. Just absolutely class. Another assist from Pogba. Just brilliant. 
And then look at the air, yeah, exactly. Look at this pass from Lindelof. But that finish from Bruno is amazing. I swear to God, I swear to God, if they chalked off that goal that Bruno scores from Lindelof, from Lindelof's assist, then it would have just been ridiculous. I'm so glad they didn't take it off. I look at that for stats. Um, I know United fans overhype Bruno a lot, and um, they probably they say he's better than Kevin De Bruyne from Manchester City. I disagree. I do think De Bruyne is the best attacking midfielder in the world, but um, this is a stat. This is a great stat. So this is goal involvement since February 2020. Bruno Fernandez joined Manchester United in the winter two seasons ago in 2019-20. Uh, around January and this is goal involvement since February 2020 and he is at the top that is honestly that's worth the money that is honestly over the last few seasons with all of United's spendings with who they bought the one that has delivered the most in my opinion has been Bruno Fernandes no question about it I mean look at that 29 goals 19 assists 48 in total He's ahead of Kane on 44 overall, including goals and assists. Salah, 41. Son, Son 35. Jamie Vardy, 32. And Kevin De Bruyne, 29. The only downside being is that Kane and Salah have had more goals than Fernandes, but you're, you're going to expect that. Kane is a full-on striker and Salah is... Liverpool's clear number one goal scorer, um, even though he plays right wing. Although he can also play up front, of course. But Bruno's had more assists than any of them. And this is ever since pretty much around he joined the club. Class. Absolutely class. Right at the top. Right, Watford versus Villa. Backman. F Hang on, let me pause it. Oh, Foster didn't play. Oh, I wonder what the Cycling ZK's vlog would have been like then. Oh, that's a shame for Foster, but oh well. But yeah, Watford Villa at Vicarage Road. Look at that crowd. Anyway, so Backman's in goal. Cathcart, Troost, Econ, Cabasalia, Messina. Kupka, Itobo and Cleverly. Ismail Assar, Semmer, Ken Semmer and Dennis. And that's it. And then Emiliano Martinez is in goal for Villa. Matty Cash, Esri Konza, Tyrone Mings and Matt Target. That is the defence from last season and what a defence that is. John McGinn and Nakamba. Ashley Young's back with El Ghazi and Buendia, his debut. And Danny Ings also with his debut as well. Ollie Watkins is injured. But yeah, look at that crowd. Daniel Backman. What a pass from Cleverly there. God, sir. Already? Wow. 1-0 Watford. That was brilliant from Dennis. But look at that. Look at that. Look at that run from uh, from Ismail Assar. And that. Uh, look at that run from Ismail Assar. And that pass from Tom Cleverley. Yeah. Matt Target couldn't get to that. See, Dennis did hit Konza first. And then he put it in. Brilliant. Dream debut. He's the fourth Nigerian to score on a Premier League debut. And listen to that roar. That, that, dribble, that dribble, though, and pace from Ismail Asada was class. No wonder Liverpool are after him. Zisco's delighted with that. Cleverly. Oh, straight to Martinez from Ismail Assar. Otherwise, that would have been a brilliant goal. And it would have been a dream start for newly promoted Watford. Well, when I say newly promoted, they're back after one season in the Championship. 
Oh, that was a mistake from Nakamba. That was not very good. Here's Saw. But no one was in the box. Here's Ken Semmer on the left. Oh, he's down. Yeah, he's nowhere near it, Tyrone Mings. That's a free kick to Watford. Ken Semmer's taken it. Just over the top from Cavasoli. Watford have easily started a better team here. Dean Smith is looking furious. Here's McGinn now, though. Here's Buendia. Buendia's down. So, oh, it's in! The assist from Dennis. What a start for Watford. Mings, that was unfortunate from Tyrone Mings. Deflection of Tyrone Mings. Tyrone Mings into the goal, but it is Ismail Assar's goal. Villa have started terrible. Watford have been superb. Now we're on the second half. Look, I like that graphic. Matt Target's off. Jacob Ramsey's on. That's Villa's, that's Villa's best chance so far of the game. Wendy up. Is Buendia again. Ramsey. Oh, that would have been a great goal if that went in. Watford's on the attack again. Oh, Martinez got to that. Dennis tried to get it in again. Leon Bailey's on for El Ghazi, the new signing. Hang on. So, looking at the new, uh, the new substitutes coming on there in the 60th minute. Uh, the new signing that Villa's got from Bayer Leverkusen, Leon Bailey, has just come on for El Ghazi. And yeah, will this change and turn Villa's game around? Because Watford so far, this 60 minutes so far, by far the better team. Superb. Dennis is off, Hernandez is on. But Dennis, I thought, has been brilliant today. Scored the first and then assisted Sars for the second. Oh, McGinn's on the run. But Cabasaley's all over him. Oh, Cash goes down. But it's play on. Now cleverly slips. Here comes Hernandez. What a goal! How about that for a substitute? First Colombian to score on Premier League debut. James Rodriguez didn't do that, I'm afraid. Last season, when Everton beat Tottenham 1-0, because that was Calvert-Lewin. That is some goal. Some goal there from Hernandez. This has been near perfect for Watford on their return. Now Dan Gosling's on and Cooker is off. Oh, that's some goal. What an assist from Bailey. And McGinn has put it in the net. It is 3-1 to Watford. Villa get their first goal of the new season.
McGinn fires it in. Not all near perfect from Zisco. Bertrand Traore comes on for Buendia. I think that's a penalty. Yeah, knew it. I knew that would be a penalty. Yeah, nowhere near. Nowhere near the ball. That is a penalty. For sure. And it's Danny Ings taking it on his debut. It's in. Ings is the 20... Hang on, what did that graphic say? Before I read that graphic, there's something I like to um, to quickly double-check. Um, but honestly, uh, from what I'm s seeing so far, yes. Um, so yeah, that was definitely a penalty. Um, Villa um, have basically been outclassed so far today. But then they come back in the game with that McGinn goal. But that was definitely been a pe that was definitely a penalty. Yes, Watford have been absolutely phenomenal all game, and by far the better team. But it hasn't been like all near perfect, has it? But then again, when you say that, you look at this penalty again. Danny Ings did score it in the ninety seventh minute, so that's right at the end of the game and right at stoppage time. So if it wasn't for that penalty, it would have been three one Watford. So yeah, Watford have been by far the better team. But still, two goals for Villa isn't too bad of a of a statistic, but it is a deserving it is a deserving win for Watford, no question. I fit I thought if Villa got three goals today, I I'm gonna be honest, it would have been undeserved. Watford were by far the better team today. Ings is the twenty fourth player to score on the Villa on Villa's debut. He's the Ings is the twenty fourth player to score on Villa, on a Premier League debut for Villa. That was it. Um. Anyway. Uh. Yeah. Three two Watford, but Watford by far the better team. I thought. Listen to that reception. But honestly, it would have been. It would have been um it would have been three one if it wasn't for that penalty, even though it was a penalty <coughs> for definite. Um excuse me. Um But yeah, that was that was brilliant display from Watford. A brilliant display. Villa have got work to do, but it is three two. I agree with Dean Smith there. Um all that pre season work and then they've wasted forty five minutes for a very poor first half, I thought. So, yeah. Villa have got work to do. Right, so let's have a look at the um, the stats then before we listen to the pundits. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, agreed with both of them, obviously. Zisco said it was a brilliant performance and Dean Smith, yeah, um, wasted 45 minutes in the first half. So, yeah. I totally get that. So, the attendance was just over 20,000. 38 possession for Watford, um, which means it was uh, 62 for Villa. 13, hang on, bloody, bloody thingamabob getting in the way there on iPlayer. Yeah, 20,000, 38 to 62, 13 to 11 attempts, 7 on target to 2. Two corners to four corners. 0 0.86 expected goals to 1.24. Yellows for Cooker, Semmer. The graphics always go faster than my speaking, don't they, for God's sake. So... The Watford bookings were Cooker, Ken Semmer and Itobo. And the one from Villa was Tyrone Mings. Now, how's both of their club's um, transfer windows coming along? So, for Watford...
The ins are loser from Nantes, 8.6 million. Emmanuel Dennis from Club Brug, 3.5. Cooker from Palmer, 2 million. Danny Rose for free from Tottenham. Josh King from Everton for free. And Itobo from Stoke on loan. The outs, Craig Dawson to West Ham, 2 million. Aston Villa's key ings. Buendia from Norwich, 33 million. Leon Bailey from Leverkusen, 27 million. Danny Ings from Southampton, 25 million. Ashley Young into Milan for free. And Axel Twanzebi from Man United on loan. And the main out is, of course, Grealish to Manchester City for 100 million. I mean, like, I agree he was the star. I agree with Lineker, he was the star. But for me, for me, the best player on the pitch until he came off was Emmanuel Dennis. I thought he was sick. Scored the first goal on his debut and then assisted the second for Saar. He was class today. Absolutely class today he was, Emmanuel Dennis. And the substitute when he came off for Hernandez paid off as well for the third goal. It's a terrific performance from Watford. No wonder European giants are after his Mila Saar. Look at the pace! He's a brilliant player, isn't he, his Mila Saar? And look at that. Look at that stat. He's ahead of their so-called talisman at the moment, Troy Deeney, as well. Uh, so this is Watford. All competitions since 2019-20. Ismail Asar is top. 20 goals, 8 assists, 28 in total. And he's beaten Troy Deeney on goals, who had 17, but 5 assists, so that makes 22. And then behind them, with goals and assists together, is João Pedro on 12, Ken Semmer on 11, Andre Gray on nine, and Gerard Delafeu also on nine. Yeah, it was a disappointing day for Villa, I agree. No, he didn't. I thought Buendia had a poor game as well. I agree with Shearer. And I also agree with Shearer on that. I have no worries of Danny Ings either. He's proved himself at Southampton. They'll have better days. So yeah, Norwich Liverpool at Carrow Road. Two Germans going head to head. Daniel Farker versus Jurgen Klopp. Now let's see the teams. Norwich, Tim Krull in goal. Oh, look at the fire coming out then. The flames for the atmosphere. Aaron's Hanley, Gibson, and Janulis. Lise Melou, Gilmore, and Rupp. Cantwell, Pukki and Rashika. Liverpool, Allison, Alexander Arnold, Matip, Tsimikas and Van Dijk returns. Oxley, Chamberlain, Milner and Keita. And then Salah, Jota and Mane up front. I like that tracksuit Klopp's wearing. Yeah, they do. They have a brilliant record at Carrow Road. I can't believe Jota missed that. Although he did get clattered on by Krull at the end. Oh, fingertips from Krull then. Jota should have had that in. Here's Max Ahrens. Cantwell. Into Pukki. Oh, Allison's cleared it away. Van Dijk, Tsimikas, Mane, Pukki's trying to tackle Mane, oh, oh my god that would have been such a good volley, and of course it would have been Salah that scored first for Liverpool, that would have been some volley if that went in, but it went wide on the left. 
what happened there? Pookie went down and the Norwich fans were complaining. Salah, Jota, it's in. Jota's 10th Premier League goal for Liverpool, an assist from Salah. But Alexander Arnold created it. Alexander Arnold created it to Salah's small pass to Jota. Cruel is fuming. I think he should have saved that because that went underneath his legs. But 1 0 Liverpool. It's Trent once again with the ball. Trent. Mane. Salah's down. I don't think that was enough to be a penalty. Yeah, I agree with the referee. It should have the right choice to play on. Liverpool got a corner. Campwell. Oh, Campwell's giving it away then to Jota. Oh, Jota's dispossessed the no parts of the Norwich defence. He's been brought down by Campwell, who gave the ball away. And yeah, that's a yellow card. Yeah, that is a deserved yellow card from Campwell. Loses the ball. And then does a ridiculous challenge there on Diogo Jota. Yeah. Free kick Liverpool. Of course Trent's going to take it. Nah, it didn't go in. Just wide from the post on the left-hand side of the goal. But Jota's off, Fabinho's on, Oxlade-Chamberlain's off and Fabinho's on. The two Brazilians come on, Fabinho and Fabinho. To join their compatriot, Alisson. Here's Mane. Salah. And for Firmino, 2-0. Liverpool's 8,000th league goal. They've hit a milestone. Liverpool have hit a milestone in history. They've written history. 8,000th goal. What a pass from Salah. And Firmino puts it in the, in the net. And the Norwich fans look on in disbelief. Where's Klopp's glasses? <laughs> Aren't they giving it away to Fabinho? And now Salah's on the run. But no, it's out. It's a goal kick to Norwich. No, it's not. It's a Liverpool corner. My bad. Of course, it came off the Norwich defence, not off Mane. Of course, it's a Liverpool corner. That's in. And the man who has delivered every single season for goals has scored once again on his Premier League on, 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 in his first game of the season. Game set and match, 3-0 Liverpool. And once again... Salah is once again on the score sheet. Rashika and Puki are off. Sargent and Ida are on. And Elliot comes on for Keita. Won't be easy for Norwich next time out because they've got Manchester City at the Etihad. Oh, Norwich have won the ball off their arm, oh, but no, he's down. Campwell's off and Duwell's on for Norwich. Gilmore's free kick went straight to Van Dijk. <sighs> Nearly scored then, Handley. But Allison has brought it out.
And then Trent cleared it away. 3 0 Liverpool, full time. So, yep, yeah, that was the managers then. I am now going to see what the statistics were. Just over 27,000. Oh, 50 50 possession. 13 attempts to 19. 2 to 8 on target. 3 to 11 for corners. 1.34 to 1.42 for expected goals. Campwell got that deserved yellow card, and Milner also got a yellow for Liverpool. Um, let's see how their transfer windows are going on. Rashika from Werder Bremen, nine point four million. This is Norwich, by the way. Tzoulis from Pauk, eight point eight million. Ben Gibson from Burnley, eight million. Josh Sargent from Werder Bremen, eight million. Angus Gunn from Southampton, five million. Pierre Lise Melou, Nice, three point five million, and Billy Gilmore on loan from Chelsea. The outs: Bowendia to Villa, thirty three million. Teti to Rosenborg for free. Vrancic for Stoke to Stoke for free. Liverpool's ins: Canate to RB Leipzig from RB Leipzig, thirty six million. But the big loss was losing Wijnaldum to PSG for free. Harry Wilson's gone to Fulham for £12 million And Marco Brogic has gone to Porto for £10.5 million. Yeah, difficult game for Norwich. That's the problem they had, is that they were going for the ball and trying to get men up front and also men behind at certain situations. But as you can see, Firmino was clearly unmarked then. So, he's free. Yeah. Aaron's was nowhere near Firmino. That was some goal from Salah. Exactly. That's what Norwich didn't do. They, did, they, they didn't give... They gave too much time to Salah... For touches on the ball. And that is why Salah scores. Because you know what Salah's like. He delivers. Hey! Champions of Europe. Anyway. Um, Chelsea versus Crystal Palace next. At Stamford Bridge. What was our lineup? Mendy... Chalaba, Christensen, Rudiger, Aspilicueta, Jorginho, Kovacic, Alonso, Mount, Werner, Pulisic. Why didn't we start Havertz? Oh well. Um, it's a shame Kante and uh, Ziyech though are both injured. Hopefully they'll both come back and return soon. Palace, Guayeta, Ward, Coyate, Gueye and Mitchell, Ayu, Riederweld, MacArthur, Schlapp, Mateta, Zahar. I'm going to be honest though, um, I know people might disagree, but I, I don't like Jorginho's hair being dyed to blonde, by the way, but that's just me. Oh, Ward won the ball off Werner then. Christensen. Pulisic nearly scored then. Hang on. Let me pause this second. I just saw a number eight playing for Chelsea. Is that Kovacic? Has Kovacic changed to number eight for us? Because I didn't realise there was a number eight playing for us. I just saw someone was wearing the number eight for Chelsea. Yeah, it's Kovacic. I thought he changed number. So there you go. When I honestly thought Mason Mount was become our, was going to become our new number eight for the nearby future, Kovacic is our now new number eight. Mount stays with 19. I thought Kovacic changed number eight. But that header went straight to Guayeta. Uh, 
Aspilicueta, Jorginho. Back to Aspilicueta. Here's Mason Mounts. Oh, didn't quite go into it. Kovacic couldn't get to that. Trevor Chalaba. Mason Mounts. Mounts down. That is surely a free kick. Mount is looking for it, though, to be fair. That's definitely a foul, though. It's weird to see Vieira as manager for Palace, to be honest. What a free kick! Good old Marcus Alonso! Chelsea's 50th direct free kick goal in the Premier League. That was class. Guaita didn't even move. Christensen. Here's Mason Mount. Oh, Werner had it, but couldn't get it in. But Pulisic does. 40 minutes, 2 0 to Chelsea. Werner couldn't get it in, I'm afraid, but Pulisic what did. And Guaita didn't hold on to the ball. And Pulisic, to, Pulisic took advantage of Guaita's misfortunes. Oh, that went straight to the Palace defence then from Jorginho. Jordan Ayew gives it to Zaha, but what a block from Rudiger. But he has brought it in, but it is a corner. That was great from Rudiger. Mateta and Schlupp off, Benteke and Anderson on. Of course, they signed Joachim Anderson from Fulham this season. What a finish. What a shot. The assist from Kovacic. And on his debut, Trevor Chalaba scores. Brilliant. Debut in the Premier League. That was brilliant from Trevor Chalaba. Palace on the run here with Zaha. Blocked by Aspilicueta, my captain. Is Riedewell taking the corner though? Oh, straight to Mendy. Thank goodness. But that's like the first, that's the second proper chance I've seen from Palace so far this game. We dominated that game. We absolutely dominated that game. I'm delighted for Trevor Chalaba. I loved that interview. Uh, right. I'm going to check the statistics quickly. So nearly 39,000. 63% 63 possession to 37. Yeah, 63 to 37. 13 attempts to 4. Six on target to one, five corners to two, 1.14 expected goals to 0 0.33, and no bookings. We absolutely dominated that game. Let's have a look at the transfer windows then for both clubs. So, of course, we've signed Romelu Lukaku for 97.5 million from Inter Milan and Marcus Bettinelli from Fulham for free as a backup. It's a shame Tamori's gone, AC Milan for 24 million. Mark Wayne's gone to Palace for 18 million, of course, from us. Giroud's gone to Inter AC Milan. Caballero's released and Gilmore's gone to Norwich on loan. As for Palace, of course, they've signed Mark Wayne from us. 
I keep forgetting Joachim Anderson actually came from Leon, not from Fulham. It's because I'm blimmin' brought up to the fact that I see I saw Joachim Anderson play for Fulham last season in the Premier League, but he was on loan. But no, Palace have officially signed Joachim Anderson from Leon for £14.9 million. And they've signed Michael Elise from Reading for £8 million and Conor Gallagher on loan for Chelsea. But look at the amount of players they've sold. McCarthy to Celtic, Townsend to Everton, Van Aanholt to Galatasaray, Gary Cahill's released and Scott Dan's released. That's mad. That was some pass from Trevor Chalaber into Werner, but Werner couldn't score. Yeah, I think I think they heavily missed Eze today. They're waiting for him to come back. He'll click on with Zaha because he was phenomenal last season. For me, Palace's best player of the season. Hey! My boy Shearer is backing us to win the title this season. Yeah, I heard about this. Abraham's going to Roma. Everton, Southampton, Goodison Park. Pickford. This is Everton's team, by the way. Pickford, Coleman, Holgate, Keane, Dean. Alan Decore. Townsend, Richarlison, Gray, Damari Gray. And then Calvert-Lewin up front. Southampton, McCarthy. Livramento, Stevens, Salisu, Peralt, Walcott, Walk, Prowse, Romeo, Gineppo, Adams, and Adam Armstrong. Their new signing from Blackburn. That's quite a nice kit, to be honest, from Southampton. I loved their away kit from last season, though, the Whites. That was stunning. Here's Calvert Lewin, all oh, blocked. Alan drived it in, but it's gone straight to McCarthy. New signing Townsend from Palace. Damari Gray. Coleman. Oh, just over from Calvert-Lewin. Everton definitely started the, the, the brighter so far. Oh, Keane lost it then. That didn't look so good from Everton. That's in. What a goal from Adam Armstrong. First Premier League goal and first for Southampton. First ever Premier League goal. That was all Michael Keane's fault. It all looked so good for Everton until that moment. And Southampton have rightly punished them with a goal from Adam Armstrong. Armstrong was going to do it again then, but Pickford saved it. Stevens clears it, but it is the corner for Everton. In. Brilliant. In from Richarlison. It's 1-1. One -one. That's Iwobi. And he's been brought down by Romeo. Free kick Everton. Here's Coleman. Oh, look at that turn. What a goal. That turn from Decore and then to finish it top right. Stunning. It's an assist from Iwobi. Romeo and Walcott off. Diallo and Teller on for Southampton. Iwobi, Richarlison, what a cross. And it's fired in from Calvert-Lewin. Everton 3, Southampton 1. Everton turned it round. They didn't even show the um, attendance there. Jesus Christ. Okay, 48% uh, possession to 52. 14 attempts to 6. 6, attempt, six on target to 3. Six quarters to eight. 2.52 expected goals to 0 0.75.
Richarlison and Decore both got yellow cards. As for the transfer windows so far for Everton and Southampton. So, the ins for Everton are Damari Gray from Leverkusen, former Leicester player, 1.7 million, and Andros Townsend from Palace for free. The outs are Josh King to Watford and Theo Walcott to Southampton. Southampton ins, ins are Adam Armstrong for Blackburn from Blackburn, 15 million. Tino Livramento from Chelsea, 5 million. Theo Walcott from Everton and Armando Broja from Chelsea on loan. The outs are Danny Ings to Villa on for 25 million. Yannick Vestergaard to Leicester for 15 million. Angus Gunn to Norwich for 5 million. Lamina to Nice for 4.7 million. And Ryan Bertrand for to Leicester as well. And that was for free. I'll tell you what, the outs don't look good for Southampton. Cross after cross after cross from Everton. In. That was some cross from Richarlison. Right, well, yeah. Everton turned that around in that match. Now it's Burnley v Brighton at Turf Moor. Right. Burnley, Pope, Lowton, Tarkovsky, me, Taylor, Goodmanson, Westwood, Cork, McNeil, Wood, Rodriguez, Brighton, Sanchez, Webster, Duffy, Dunk, Gross, Alzate, March, Mawipu, Basuma, Trossard and Mope. And of course, Ben White's gone to Arsenal. Burnley score. What a corner. And what a header from Tarkovsky. Oh, what? Oh, thank God for that. Let me have a look at that. VAR intervened with this, so I want to have a look and see what I thought with this goal. Oh, he did actually, he did actually push Mope down before he scored. I mean, I mean, like, if that was like, if you were going with the rules, then yeah, um, I'd rule that out because he did push Mope to the floor, but he did get the header in right time, but. I don't know. Yeah, no, I I probably would have ruled that out myself, not going to lie. But that was still a great header to get in the goal. But that stood. Fastest goal on opening Premier League weekend since 2017. Brighton lose the ball. Here's Goodmanson. Goodmanson. Oh, he's hit the post. He could have passed to Woods, but... Goodmanson had a go himself, but it wasn't too far off. He's hit the post. Another corner for Burnley. Clearance from Shane Duffy. That's in. 2-0. Oh, no. It missed. I thought that went in for a second. It's another great corner, though. But Sanchez got to it. Then me got the header. No, that's definitely not in. Yeah. Right. Lalana's come off. Come on for Mawipu. Mope missed. He should have scored that. But it's Gross's corner. But Brighton still can't find a goal.
Oh, that's surely a penalty. Yeah, that is a surely a penalty for Burnley. How is Dunk complaining about that? Oh, hang on. I might have got this wrong. Hold on. Yeah, no, 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 no. I got that wrong. No, I no, I I apologise to Lewis Dunk there. No, I have. He has every right now to complain about Burnley thinking that's a penalty because that wasn't a penalty. No, that was outside the box. Yeah, no, it's definitely a foul. It's definitely a foul, and uh, Charlie Taylor goes down. Charlie Taylor goes down. Um, but yeah, no, it is literally, um, it was outside the penalty box. Yeah, that was not a penalty. So yeah, no, that is a very good decision, I thought. I got that wrong. That was definitely a free kick. Oh, he wasn't far off, Goodmanson, but another wasted chance. Despite the fact Burnley are 1-0 in front at the moment still. So that looks good for them so far. Alzate comes off. Moda comes on for Brighton. Basuma. This is Moda. Already he's turned the game around. He set the equaliser for Mope. It's 1-1 in the 73rd minute. That substitute's paid off so far. They're making another one now. McAllister comes on for Trossard. Moda to Webster. Gross. In 2-1. Mopes won it. Brighton have turned this game right around. That's McAllister's second Premier League goal. Those two substitutes have been fantastic from Graham Potter. Fantastic decisions from Graham Potter. 2-1 Brighton and the substitutes have turned the game around. Two one Brighton. Wasted day for Burnley. Right, uh before I listen to Lineker, Wright and Shearer, I'd like to see the statistics and transfers. So the will they show the attendance this time? No, they don't. Uh thirty six possessions, sixty four, fourteen attempts to fourteen, three on target to eight. Seven corners to six. 1.40 expected goals to 1.70. Goodmanson, Tarkovsky and Mope all got yellow cards. As for the transfers. Uh, Burnley's Ings are Nathan Collins from Stoke, 12 million. And Wayne Hennessy from Palace for free. The outs are Ben Gibson to Norwich for 8 million. And Robbie Brady's released. Brighton's ins are Mwepu from uh, Red Bull Salzburg and Sherpen from Ajax, undisclosed. The main out being Ben White to Arsenal for 50 million. Jahan Baksh has gone to Feyenoord for 3.9. Davy Propp has gone to PSV Eindhoven and Matt Ryan's gone to Real Sociedad. Yeah, those substitutes I thought completely turned it around for Brighton. Mind you, that is a very good point from Shearer. Uh, so, uh, yes, I did say about the fact that if that VAR, I I would have probably ruled that out. But that is a very good point from Shearer. And I didn't know, notice that, my stupid unobservancy. Mope wasn't even looking at the ball when uh, Tarkovsky um, pushed him over. Tarkovsky was actually going for the ball. Mope was just looking at... Um, 
Mope was uh, looking at, uh, yeah, Mope wasn't even looking at the ball. He was looking at Tarkovsky, only at Tarkovsky. I mean, like, I agree, you've got to be there to mark him, etc. But he wasn't looking at the ball, nowhere near the ball. And Tarkovsky's not having it. I'm not having it, and I don't blame him. So I do actually agree with Shearer. The goal should have stand. So I'm wrong. Pundits are right. Yeah. Mope wasn't even was just Mope was just blocking. Mope was just blocking Tarkovsky. And yeah. Didn't bother to look at him. They didn't bother to look at the ball. So yeah, correct decision. I got it wrong. Leicester Wolves at King Power. Right. Schmeichel. Ricardo Pereira, Amati Soyuncu, and Thomas Tillemans Ndidi, Perez Madison Barnes, and Vardy. As for Wolves, Jose Sarr, Kilman, Cody, Sice, Hoover, Martinho, Neves, Marcel. Trincayo, Jimenez, Traore. Jimenez is back for Wolves. Oh, it's now... Here's Perez. Tavardi. Bang! No, straight to Jose Sarr. Traore. Traore's through! How did he miss that? He should have drilled that in over the top of Schmeichel and in the goal. How did Traore miss that? He did everything right as well, Adama Traore. Here's Perez. Oh, maybe not. He's not taking the throw. Pereira is instead. Now it's Perez. Right, Ricardo Pereira. Vardy in. What a setup. And the man who always delivers for Leicester, Vardy, has put it in. Vardy's 119th Premier League goal. Class. Step over and nutmegs Matinho, his Portuguese colleague, and straight to Vardy, who scores. And Brendan Rogers is there like job done. Harvey Barnes, Madison, Perez, Tillemans fancies it. Brilliant save by Jose Sarr. Oh, that was a mistake by Amati. Neves, Trincayo, go on Trincayo. Ah, oh, he's missed that. But it was a great block by Sonchu. But Wolves have a corner. Madison and Perez are off. Samare and Vestergaard are on for Leicester. Trior is one again. Ah, oh, it's gone straight to Schmeichel. Tillemans, Vardy. Oh, close. Trincayo's off. Gibbs White is on. Here's Kilwin. Oh, and it's blocked by Leicester once again. There's Hoover to Neves. Neves dips it in. And Schmeichel denies Kilman. And Leicester hold on to the 1-0 win. I thought Wolves played quite well, to be honest. So did Leicester, though, as well. Don't get me wrong. Uh, let me just uh, look at the statistics before we move on to the pundits and the transfers. Um...
Oh, that stretch. So the attendance was nearly 14,000. 56 to 44 for possession. Nine attempts to 17. Five on target to three. Five corners to four corners. 0.53 expected goals to 1.37. The yellow cards were from Vardy, Marcel and Hoover. As for the transfer windows so far for these two clubs... Leicester have signed Daka from Red, Red Bull Salzburg, 23 million. Samare from Lille, 17 million. Vestergaard from Southampton, 15 million. And Bertrand from Southampton for free. The outs are Christian Fuchs, Segins Under, and Wes Morgan, who has retired. Wolves is in. So, 8 Nori from Angus. Jose Sarr from Olympiacos. Mosquera from Atletico Nacional. And Trincayo from Barcelona on loan. The outs is Roma. Is Rui Patricio to Roma for £9.7 million. So here's another statistic um, for Leicester fans. Uh, Vardy is now second for goals scored age 30 and over, only behind Ian Wright on 93. Vardy's on 85. He's overtaken Shearer, who's on 84. Lampard's on 82. And Teddy Sheringham is fifth on 77. Right, now the Friday night clash between Brentford and Arsenal. But yeah, I thought... Leicester played well. Wolves also played well. But yeah, they'll, they'll bounce back with a win at some point. I know they will. But now, Brentford and Arsenal at the Brentford Community Stadium. That's a really nice stadium. So Brentford's playing Raya in goal. Ajar, Jansen and Pinnock in defence. Canos, Norgard, Onyeka, Janelt and Henry. Mbomo and Tony up front. Arsenal have Leno in goal. Chambers, White, Mary, Pablo Mari and Kieran Tierney. Sambi, Lukonga and Xhaka in midfield. With Pepe, Smith, Rowe and Martinelli ahead. And Balungan, Balagan up front. Abamyang, Lacazette, Bofill, and Partey is injured. Saka's on the bench. Already a shot from Brentford. That was quite worrying from Arsenal there. He hit the post. Wait, did it hit the post? I swear it did hit the post. Yeah, it did hit the post. Very close to 1-0 Brentford. They're in again. Oh, not quite. Goal. What a goal from Sergi Canos. Assist from Pinnock. Crowd. The atmosphere at the stadium is incredible. Once again, Arsenal's defence not showing their worth and conceding another goal. Oh, he should have scored that. Once again, Arsenal are all over the place defensively. I mean, what is Ben White doing? Nowhere near him. Ben White, new signing from Brighton, 50 million all over the place. Jacker, Tierney, Balogun goes down, here's Smith Rowe, he shoots, and Raya saves it. I'll tell you what, I love Brentford's home kit this season, and Arsenal's third kit. Saka comes on, I'll tell you what, that is class. That is class from the Brentford fans. Applauding Bakayo Saka onto the ground. After the amount of horrible racist abuse he got after the England game against Italy in the final. That's class from the Brentford fans. Brilliant. Xhaka gave it a go then.
Beck Sorensen comes on for Ajar. And Reese Nelson comes on for Gabriel Martinelli. Right. It's a throw from Brentford. And Sorensen's known for his long throws. Reminds me of Rory Delap, who played for Stoke. And speaking of long throws, that's gone in. Norgard puts it in with a header. 2-0 Brentford. And Arsenal couldn't deal with the long throw. And weirdly enough, when I remember Rory Delap's long throws for Stoke, they were mainly against Arsenal. I remember his one against Arsenal. Arsene Wenger couldn't deal with the long throws, and neither can Arsenal now. 2-0 Brentford. Corner for Brentford. Bid strips on for Onyeka. Mbomo's off. Force is on. Chambers is off. Tavares is on. Arsenal's new signing. Pepe has a go, but fine piece of goalkeeping from Raya. But that cross from Tierney was exceptional. But Pepe couldn't put it in. Oh, look, it's Ian Wright. Two 0 Brentford. Thomas Frank and the Brentford fans loved that. Right, let's have a look at the statistics. Uh, as I now hear my dog bark. Sixteen and a half thousand attendance. Thirty five to sixty five for possession. Eight to twenty two for attempts. Three to four on target. Two to five on corners. One point four three to one point twenty for expected goals and no bookings. As for as for the transfers for Brentford and Arsenal, the ins are obviously Christopher Ajar from Celtic, thirteen point five million. Frank Onyekas from Mid Tjaland for eight point five. Johan Wieses from Lorient eight point five, and Miles Part Harris from Chelsea for one point four. The outs are Dalsgar to Mid Tjaland. And Emiliano Marcondes to Bournemouth for free. Arsenal's ins include Ben White from Brighton for 50 million, Albert Sambi Laconga from Anderlecht for 15.1, and Tavares from Benfica for 6.8. The outs are Joe Willock to Newcastle, 25 million, David Luiz is gone, Gwen Doozy is gone, and, uh, well, uh, Gwen Doozy and Saliba are both on loan at Marseille. Yeah, I thought that as well. Arsenal may have had the more chances, but yeah, Brentford were definitely the better team, I thought. He had a torrid game, Ben White, on his Arsenal debut. Absolutely torrid. Day and night to forget. Right, the biggest uh, game, in my opinion, of the entire weekend. Tottenham, Manchester City at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. No, Kane didn't play at all. Not even in the bench. Kane wasn't even on the bench either, but Nuno was saying it's down to do with fitness. But let's have a look at the Tottenham team. Lloris, Tanganga, Regulon, Sanchez, Dyer, Hoiberg, Skip, Lucas Mora, Deli Alley, Steven Bergwijn and Son. See, I'm surprised Doherty didn't start because it's Nuno. I don't know how Lacelso was on the bench. Uh, as for City, Edison, Cancelo, Benjamin Mendy, Ruben Diaz, Nathan Ake, Fernandinho, Gundawan, Grealish, Mares, Sterling, and Torres. Ferran Torres. And I'm not surprised that De Bruyne, Laporte, Rodri, Walker, and Stones are all on the bench resting from the Euros. And Bernardo Silva. Sterling, he's already tackled. Gundogan. Grealish. Oh! Free kick.
Free kick City. Oh, good one. Nearly got that in then. Freelish. Mendy. Oh. Fernandinho nearly slotted that in. Larice missed it as well. Here's Mendy. Oh, and Cancelo gets it wide. Tanganga keeps it, but Mendy wins it back. Oh, Tottenham have won it back. Here's Son. Back to Son. Deli Alley's down. Free kick Tottenham. I'm not a fan of Deli Alley's hair, by the way, but of course it's up to him. Son gets it in. Tottenham could not get that in, and Gundogan blocks it. Gundogan. Oh, Gundogan's giving it away. And Regulon's won it for Tottenham. Regulon's down. But Mares wins the ball. Here's Gundogan. Sterling. And it's a miss from Mares. That's well off target from Mares. Sterling's lost the ball. And Hoiberg has passed it to Lucas Mora. And here's Son. Son versus Diaz. But Cancelo comes back. Bergvine's behind. And Son misses. Not by much, though. Edison couldn't get the ball, though. Oh, it did come off Cancelo slightly then from a... Uh, yeah, it came off Cancelo's bum for a deflection. But Edison still couldn't grab it. Okay. Diaz, Grealish, Grealish versus Tanganga, Benjamin Mendy, but Dyer gets it out, and Tottenham are on the run again, here's Bergvine, into Son, can Ake Keep up with Son. Son has a go. And it's in! It's in! 1 0 Tottenham. That's some pass from Lucas Mora. Ake didn't give too much towards Son. And Son delivers. Even Diaz couldn't block that. And he was City's best player of last season for me. But in bottom left. And it went past Edison. And it is 1-0 to Tottenham against Manchester City. Is Mares. Ake. Tottenham clear it. Now Benjamin Mendy. Who loses it to Regulon and Lucas Mora? Tackle behind by Fernandinho. Here is Bergvine. And he misses. So close to being, and it should have been 2 0 to Tottenham. Here's Mares. Fernandinho. Mares again. And another Deli Alley tackle. Benjamin Mendy's trying to bring Deli Ali up. Oh, sl slight shirt pull then. 
But did he win the ball? Did he win the ball? I'm going to have another look. No, he didn't win the ball. So, yeah, that is a foul. It's not a yellow card, though. Good one plays it to Cancelo. Oh, how did he miss that? How did Ferran Torres miss that? City should have equalised. But Tottenham up earlier should have had a second goal from Bergwijn. Sterling's off. Jesus is on. Is Grealish. Straight to Lloris. Lo Celso's on for Bergwijn. Lucas Moura's got it once again. I think he's been class so far today. Down he goes, though. Mares and Mendy are off. De Bruyne and Zinchenko are on. His son. Nearly made it set a 2 0. And he had Edison at full stretch. De Bruyne's got it, they can't do any more. Tottenham have beaten Manchester City. The champions' defence starts with a defeat to Tottenham. Can Tottenham beat Wolves next week at Molyneux? Well, the attendance was uh, just over 58,000. Um, 35 per session to 65. 13 attempts to 18. Two on target to four. Three corners to 11. 0 0.98 expected goals to 1.84. Lucas Mora, Davidson Sanchez and Jack Grealish all got booked. As for transfer businesses, we all know the main saga is around Harry Kane on if he's moving to Manchester City from Tottenham. But it's very big, the transfer rumours are. We don't know what's happening, but... Tottenham's ins include Christian Romero from Atalanta, 42.5 million. Brian Gill from Sevilla, 21.6 million, plus player swap with Eric Lamella. And Pierre-Luigi Gallini from At Atalanta on loan. The outs are Foyth, Villarreal, 13.5. Toby Alderweire has gone to Qatar. Joe Hart, Celtic, 1 million. Eric Lamella, Sevilla. Danny, Watford, Danny Rose, Watford. Man City's ins. Jack Grealish, Aston Villa, 100 million. And the outs include Jack Harrison to Leeds, 11 million. Eric Garcia and Sergio Aguero are both at now at Barcelona. So that leaves me with one game now of game week one. Newcastle versus West Ham at St. James's Park. City had the chances, but I thought Tottenham were the better team overall. And that block from Dyer was great. I thought Lucas Moura was brilliant today. Look how he won the ball then over Grealish. See Grealish having a go at him then. That's what I mean. Ever since Man City have played at that Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, they have never won a game at the new Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Lost 1-0 in the Champions League quarterfinal. Again the Premier League, 2-0 in the 2019-20. 2-0 again last season and then 1-0 this season. It's been City's bogey round the last few seasons. Yeah, disappointing performance for City. And, uh, yeah, Tottenham, uh, Tottenham, I thought, deserved the three points. Uh, right, Newcastle versus West Ham. I thought Ake had a poor game as well. Right, last one of the week. Newcastle, West Ham. So, Newcastle starts Freddie Woodman, Kraft, Fernandez, Clark, Murphy, Hayden, Shelby, Ritchie, St. Maximan, Almiron, and Callum Wilson. Why is Cher on the bench? I highly rate Cher. 
Um, West Ham, Fabianski, Kufal, Dawson, Ogbonna, Cresswell, Rice, Socek, Bowen, Ben Rama, Fornals, Antonio. They need to sign Lingard if they want to be in the, in, in the top 10, around the top 10, and battling for Europe. Shelby lost the ball to Kufal. Here's Murphy. Sam Maximan. Oh, that was some pass. Oh, it's going out. It's going out. Asking too much and Emil Kraft couldn't get to it. Here is Sam Maximan. It's in. Callum Wilson on his debut again for Newcastle. 1-0. All of his goals came after the second half last season. That's his first goal for Newcastle in the first half. Listen to the noise at St. James's Park. The Toon Army are going berserk. They're very happy with that. Step over from Sam Maximan. Declan Rice couldn't have it, and he sets up for Callum Wilson, and Fabianski couldn't get to it, and there is Joe Willock in the stands for Newcastle. Kufal's throwing. Now Antonio. And now Ben Rama. Four nows, Cresswell, 1-1! One, one. It's Jared Bowen. Oh, it's offside. They haven't given it to West Ham. So it remains 1-0 Newcastle. VAR is having a look, though. To be honest, I think this is going to stand. Yeah, it should stand because Bowen touched it in the goal. Yeah, agreed. Completely agreed. It didn't touch Socek. Yeah. Yeah, it didn't touch Socek at all. Yeah, it is 1-1. Correct decision. Every decision I've seen this game week has been correct. Much better for the game. Bowen could have made it 2-1 then, but Woodman saved it. But West Ham have won it back. But St. Maximan has dispossessed Ben Rama. Could this be 2-0 for Newcastle? Here's Almiron. Hayden. Shelby. He's looking for Callum Wilson again. 2-0. Oh, no. Could have made it 2-0 with that cheeky manoeuvre. Back heel. But it goes straight to Fabianski. That was stunning dribble, though, there. That was a stunning dribble there, though, from Bowen. A good block from the Premier League debutant, Woodman. And there is Gareth Southgate watching on at St. James's Park. Sam Maximan goes past Ben Rama. And now taking on Socek. Almiron's shot gets deflected and it hits the bar. Could have been 2-1 Newcastle and Fabiadski was beaten. But Almiron hits the bar. There's Sam Maximan.
Almiron. Here's Richie. And what a free a header! It's 2-1 to Newcastle. Murphy takes the lead. And the boyhood Newcastle fan makes it 2-1 to the home side. West Ham have work to do for the second half. So Maximan gets dispossessed by Declan Rice. Here's Jared Bowen. Antonio gets a touch. And it, Ben Rama scores. It's 2-2. West Ham are a level again. And I just realised Mikel Antonio is now the new number nine for West Ham. No chance for Woodman. And it is 2 all at St James's Park. Ben Rama equalises. Craig Dawson, the new signing from Watford, does gave it, get it out. Newcastle have a throw in and Sat Maximan is once again the danger man. West Ham clear it. Could have been 3-2 Newcastle. Blocked by Declan Rice. Almiron and Kufal both went for the ball. But Newcastle have a corner. Fabianski couldn't keep hold of that either. Another chance for Newcastle and they miss. Four nows. Oh, he's hit the bar. And penalty for West Ham. Oh, I don't know if that was a penalty to me. They've given it. Newcastle fans are fuming. It'll be 3 2. No, he's missed. But the follow up. Follow up from Socek. 3 2 West Ham. It was a terrible penalty from Antonio. But Socek. My player of the season for West Ham last season follows it up and makes it 3 2. Antonio again. And he's fired it in and made amends for his penalty miss. And West Ham have surely sealed it. It's 4 2. West Ham have gone from 2-1 behind and 1-0 behind to lead 4-2. What a turnaround for David Moyes' team. He rifles it home. Right, so Shelby Craft and Wilson come off for of Fraser, Sean Lonstaff and Joe Linton. I think it's a corner to Newcastle. It is a corner to Newcastle. Ryan Fraser took it. Oh, and that could have been another goal for Newcastle then. But Richie's shot was deflected and it misses. That's the end of the match. To be honest, how can the Newcastle fans boo to that? I thought they played really well, to be honest. I thought they were quite unlucky. Um, they played really well, I thought. West Ham, but, but West Ham turned, turned this around brilliantly. But I thought Newcastle played pretty well, to be honest. They'll be back. They'll be back. So I don't know how the fans are booing to that. I don't agree with that at all. I thought Newcastle played pretty decent, to be honest. So the attendance was over 50,000. 47% possession to 53. 17 attempts to 18. 3 on target to 9. <clears throat> 7 corners to 6. <coughs> 1.79 expected goals for 2.99. Bookings only for John Joe Shelby for Newcastle. Um, as for the transfer window so far for both teams. Let's have a look. Newcastle have now officially signed Joe Willock from Arsenal for £25 million. Andy Carroll is gone. 
Craig Dawson comes in for West Ham for two million from Watford, and Alfonso Ariola is on loan from PSG. Out goes Felipe Anderson to Lazio, two point six million, and also Fabian Balbuena, who has moved to Dynamo Moscow for free. See. I'm going to be honest, I do agree with Steve Bruce. I thought the penalty decision was a bit harsh, to be honest, but I don't know. He didn't get the ball, but I, I didn't think it was enough to be a penalty. West Ham have turned this around, though, brilliantly. Yeah, I didn't think it was a penalty, but we'll see what the pundits say. Yeah, I thought it was a harsh decision. I agree with Steve Bruce. I didn't think that was a penalty at all. It's too little. It wasn't anything. <clears throat> it was too little to be a penalty. Also, he pretty much gets the ball. That's a clean tackle, I think. Yeah, for me, that's not a penalty. And I don't know why the Newcastle fans are booing. They're probably booing at the decisions from the referee. But they shouldn't boo with the performance because I thought Newcastle played pretty well, to be honest. But I thought West Ham also played well. But they did turn it around and delivered. They will. Newcastle will be back, though. And now, look at this stat for West Ham. Mikel Antonio is now joint West Ham's all-time top Premier League goal scorer with a certain Palio Di Canio. Ahead of Mark Noble on 46, Carlton Coles on 41, Trevor Sinclair 37, Andy Carroll 33, Frederick Canute 29, John Hartson 24. He will surely now become the all-time top scorer for West Ham in the Premier League. Mikel Antonio, what a player. He is brilliant, I thought, Sam Maximan. Unlucky. I thought Newcastle were unlucky this weekend. They'll bounce back with this performance they put in. I mean, look at that from Sam Axeman. Winning the ball. Going past most of the West Ham midfield and defence. He's a brilliant player. I'm surprised no one's looking to sign him. Yeah, I agree with Ashley Williams. It's not all doom and gloom. They played really well, I thought. Unlucky today, Newcastle were. I'm not saying that West Ham were lucky. They were brilliant as well. Should have been a draw in my eyes. They both played really well. So, yeah, there you go. That is match week one complete of the new Premier League season. So, uh, thank you very much, for guy um, guys, for watching. Uh, who did you think was the best performing team this weekend for game week one? I thought it was uh, Manchester United. They absolutely battered Leeds. Um, but, yeah, I will see you for game week two. Cheerio.